A big flashpoint has emerged between the U.S. and Israel. Amid reports of intense violence in the West Bank, the Biden administration is slated to impose sanctions against IDF's Netza Yehuda Battalion for alleged human rights abuses directed towards Palestinians in the West Bank. Now, this is why it is unprecedented, because this is the first time that the U.S. would impose sanctions on an Israeli military unit if it goes through with it. The sanctions will reportedly lead to banning the battalion and the members from receiving any kind of U.S. military assistance or training. The report drew a sharp response from Israel, Pr Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has hit out against the sanctions plan, saying he has been pushing against the move in talks with American leaders. War Cabinet member Benny Gantz said, and I'm going to quote him here, We have great respect for our American friends, but imposing sanctions on the unit is a dangerous precedent and sends the wrong message to our shared enemies at a time of war. The sanctions come after growing violence by Israeli troops in West Bank. 37 Palestinians have been killed and 68 injured in the past 24 hours. Israeli forces launched the raid on the Nur Shams area near the Palestinian city of Tulkaram on Friday. The Israeli army released a video that it claimed showed its operation in Tulkaram. Hundreds of Palestinians marched in a funeral procession carrying the bodies of the two men killed in the settler attack on the village of Akraba in the West Bank. According to the mayor of Akraba, some 50 armed settlers attacked members of his community and fired at the Palestinian youth, killing two of them and wounding others. The Palestine Red Crescent Society said soldiers blocked its ambulances from reaching the area and tending to the wounded. The latest skirmish is just one of the, of the many incidents that has taken place in the recent past. The West Bank, which Israel occupied since 1967, has seen a surge in violence in the previous year, particularly ever since Israel's war with Hamas erupted in October last year. Now, for more on this, we earlier spoke with Scott Lucas, who's a professor of international studies in Clinton Institute in Dublin. Listen in. Even as this action is being taken, uh, the U.S. House of Representatives uh, passed a bill yesterday authorizing almost $20 billion in further military assistance to Israel. Uh, you know, if the United States government really wanted to limit the Israeli military, rather, you know, whether it was in its actions on the West Bank or perhaps more significantly uh, the mass killings in Gaza, it would restrict military aid or even cut it off. But there's no sign that the U.S. government's going to do that. Uh, there's no sign that the U.S. government is going to uh, take action to demand uh, an unconditional ceasefire in Gaza. So, you know, the, the, you know the, the Israeli government for its own people was going to have to come out and say this is unacceptable. Uh, but the, the current, albeit tense, U.S.-Israel relationship is gonna continue where Israel has space for its military operations, especially in Gaza. Uh, even if the U.S. Is, is saying to the Israelis, look, you, you really need to rein in the extremist settlers and rein in your military in terms of the violence against those who are in the West Bank.